In the last episode of The Tolleson Life, we rode the beautiful Spearfish Canyon. We paid a visit to the old historic town of Deadwood. In this episode, we'll visit what is touted to be the largest sculpture in the world. And we ride the famous Iron Mountain Road. And we top off the day with a visit to four presidents on Mount Rushmore. All this and more coming up next. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today's video is really part three of our South Dakota trip uh, where we attended the 80th anniversary of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. And today, once again, we have in the Tullison Life Garage my twin brother David. So welcome back, man. Hey man, thank you. Yeah. So tell us about today's video. So today's video is actually our second day of riding in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And on this video, you'll see that we've got to uh, have the opportunity to visit some of the great memorials that we've always talked about wanting to see. Uh, for so long and uh, Crazy Horse yeah. is one of the monuments as along with the Mount Rushmore oh, yeah. and just yeah. just beautiful riding, beautiful scenery. As a matter of fact, let's go and start that video. Well, it looks like we have another beautiful day ahead of us here in South Dakota and next door is another momentum. That's Jason from Nevada. He has a 399 model and uh, brand new. It's his very first trip with it. So let me find David and see what our agenda is for the day. Okay, David, what are we doing here on day two of our Sturgis trip? Okay, so today we're going to go visit the Crazy Horse Memorial. To do that, we're just going to jump on the interstate and exit off here at Highway 85. We'll go, we'll go through Deadwood, and 385 takes us all the way down. All the way down, we'll go through Hill City, stay on 385, and we're going to arrive at Crazy Horse Memorial. So from Crazy Horse, we're going to just continue down 385. It's going to come down to uh, 16. We're going to cut across on 16, which turns into 16A, and we're going to cut across uh, Custer Park, and then we're going to turn left and ride the famous Iron Mountain Road, and we're going to follow that all the way up to Mount Rushmore. So after getting our agenda for the day, we departed the campground and traveled about an hour and a half away through some beautiful country until we saw signs that indicated we were getting close to our first destination. Just a couple more turns and we had arrived at the Crazy Horse Memorial. We paid the $7 fee per person and made our way to the parking lot. And as you can see in the distance, this monument will be huge when it's completed. After parking, we arrived at the Welcome Center which contains an Indian Museum of North American History. The Crazy Horse Memorial is a mountain monument under construction on privately held land in the Black Hills. It's located in Custer County of South Dakota. The monument depicts the Oglala Lakota warrior Crazy Horse, with him riding upon a horse and pointing to his tribal land. The memorial was commissioned by Henry Standing Bear, a Lakota elder, and he asked for a sculptor who had previously worked on Mount Rushmore to begin the project, Korsak Sarkovsky. This memorial is located on land that's considered sacred by the Lakota. It's between Custer and Hill City and roughly 17 miles away from Mount Rushmore. The sculptor's final dimensions will be 641 feet long, 563 feet tall. The arm of Crazy Horse, well, that'll be 263 feet long when completed. Oh, and the face, it's 87 and a half feet high. By comparison, the heads of the four presidents at Mount Rushmore are each 60 feet high. This monument has been in progress since 1948. And as you can tell, it is far from completion. If completed as designed, it will be the world's second tallest statue, eclipsed only by the Statue of Unity located in India. And after spending some time in the museum, we went outside where we were entertained by Native American dance and music. You know, after we left Crazy Horse, 
we cut through Custer State Park, and that's when things became a little interesting. And it wasn't long until we hit the first roadblock. That's a small herd of bighorn sheep, I think. They were just minding their own business, and after they passed, we traveled up the road until we were stopped by a second roadblock. So we made it through the bighorn sheep okay, yeah. but then came the herd of buffalo. What did yeah. you think when you saw the herd of buffalo, man? Well, like I said, it was a beautiful sight, but I was a little apprehensive because we were on motorcycles and yeah. we don't have the protection of a car. And if one of these you know, characters decide to get with it, yeah. uh, we, we're going to be in a bad spot. Yeah, no question about it. In fact, let's just see how we did. All right. All right, so we made it through the Buffalo, made it through Custer Park, and now we're gonna ride the famous Iron Mountain Road. That's right, the famous Iron Mountain Road. It's 17 miles with 314 curves, 14 switchbacks, three pigtails, three tunnels, and two splits. And at the end of the road, four presidents. And it didn't take us long before we arrived at the first tunnel. And then multiple curves with several switchbacks. Then the first split. Followed by more curves. And then the second tunnel. As soon as we exit the second tunnel, the first pigtail. Now the second split. Keep in mind, this road was designed to go slow and enjoy the scenery, which is exactly what we did. And now through the third tunnel, And 
that is where we were greeted by the four presidents up on Mount Rushmore. But to get there, we have to navigate a few more curves and a couple more pigtails. Before long, we had a clear view of the incredible monument. After parking, we walked to the front entrance. And on the other side, well, that was our first close look at the iconic Monument of the Four Presidents, carved on Mount Rushmore. We got closer as we walked through the Avenue of Flags. It's a walkway that leads to the mountain. It's flanked on both sides by flags of the country's states and territories. So hey guys, we're here at Mount Rushmore. Look at that. We were truly impressed with the carving and all it represented. The four presidents symbolized the first 150 years of the United States. Washington's face was the first to be carved, completed in 1934. And of course, he represents the founding of the country. Thomas Jefferson was next. He was completed in 1936. He was recognized for the expansion across the continent with the Louisiana Purchase. The next president to be carved was actually Abraham Lincoln. He was completed in 1937. He was selected because of the preservation through the ordeal of the Civil War. And the final president to be carved was Theodore Roosevelt, completed in 1939. He was chosen because he helped develop the country domestically as well as a global power. Carving took 14 years to complete, beginning in 1927, completed in 1941. Well, we've had another great day here in South Dakota, and now we'll travel back to the RV, but first, get to ride through some more beautiful Black Hills. And man, we look forward to tomorrow. Join us in the next video where David has to make an unexpected flight home. And Clay and I travel to Wyoming to visit the historic Devil's Tower. All that and more in our next video. Well, that's going to do it for this video. As always, we appreciate you watching. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and you want to see more content in the future. So as always, be well and stay safe.